This is the uh, second web talk in the M plus web talk series. Web talk number two discusses latent transition analysis and the new technique of random intercept latent transition analysis. It focuses on how to use M plus for this type of analysis, giving details about how to specify the models in M plus and how to interpret the results from the output and how to understand the error messages. In contrast, web talk number one focused on modeling ideas and relating different models to each other. Web talks number one and two are related in that the modeling ideas used in web talk two were presented in a larger context in web talk number one. Web talk number two uses a series of new M plus features designed specifically for latent transition analyses. And these features were introduced in M plus version 8.5 and much more extensively in version 8.6 in order to make the interpretation of the analysis results easier. Following APA conventions, this web talk can be referred to as shown here. And I'd like to thank my M plus colleagues for their help in putting this talk together. On slide two, you get the uh, website for M plus web talks and links to the YouTube videos. And again, a companion piece of this talk is M plus web talk number one, where LTA and RILTA analyses are discussed in segments 11 to 14. Slide three gives the outline of the whole web talk and it's uh, a web talk that's broken up into over 20 segments, each of them uh, about 10 to 15 minutes long. So you can go and find the topic of particular interest to you easier. I start off with an example. So i am discuss a particular data set and focus on the kinds of questions you can ask in latent transition analysis, trying to be as non-technical as possible. In contrast, section two, the basic statistical building blocks section, goes uh, deep into the technicalities of the statistics behind the latent transition analysis. And you may wanna study that right away or come back to it once you've uh, gotten into uh, the analyses. I'll start off with analysis without covariates, where I'll talk about regular LTA and RI LTA, the new random intercept version. I'll compare results from those kinds of analysis, and I discuss how to decide on the number of classes using those two approaches. Then I'll turn to checking model fit and model modifications, trying to make the model fit better. So I'm gonna check response pattern fit and bivariate fit. I'm going to look at the uh, typical assumption of measurement invariance across time. And I'm going to investigate whether we have to add residual correlations across time. And I'm going to take a look at lag two modeling uh, using that instead of the typical lag one modeling. Then I'll add covariates and I'll focus on covariate effects on transition probabilities where we have some new nice output features. I'll again talk about how to do that in the RI LTA context, and I will compare results with the regular LTA. Then I'll turn to the interesting topic of measurement invariance across individuals. So that has to do with uh, concepts like item bias. Now I'm gonna take two approaches to study measurement invariance across individuals. One is the uh, typical multiple group analysis, and the other is the approach of using direct effects of covariates onto indicators. And I'll discuss why I think that's preferable in this case. <clears throat> then I'll turn to special topics, modeling stationarity of transition probabilities, mover stayer modeling, and a long section on distal outcome added to the latent transition model. And then finally, I'll turn to error messages in a long section discussing the typical uh, 
error messages that you get when using multiple latent class variables as in latent transition analysis. And I'll just discuss first a little bit about maximum likelihood theory for identification and non-identified models. Finally, and what didn't fit on this slide, I'll make some final comments about this type of modeling in general. 